So this video is about one of the most hotly debated topics in four-wheel driving around tyres, and that is wide versus narrow. So I've done the research, read the books, done the measurements, and I'm gonna to present to you here my findings. But the most important thing to know about tyres is that they are incredibly complicated and this book here has a great sentence where it says look you cannot assume that a tyre is anything like a balloon it's way more complicated than that and just listen to this Formula One engineer. So one final question it's clear from everything that you've said today just how complex tyre management is and how important tyres are but it, it sounds like you know everything you need to know and you've got it all under control. No, we know very little. Uh, we know very little about tyres. I think we know a lot more than we knew 10 years ago, but it's still a big mystery. But yeah, and we, we're miles away from, uh, from understanding um, the tyres very well. Um, and if you think you understand it very well, you have to, <laughs> you have, you have to uh, reconsider it because there's so much signs around there are uh, showing that we are nowhere near um, understanding it as, as well as we should. So tyres are really, really complex and any time you make a really simplistic statement that's generally wrong or at least partially wrong. But I'm going to go through a few things that I've learned and researched in this about wide versus narrow tyres. I learned a lot in the process and hopefully you guys will as well. We're going to start with measuring the contact patches. So I put a few different tyres on the Ranger, some on a Discovery 5 and a couple on a Discovery 4. And here's what I found. So we'll take the Ranger first with a 265 65517 and a 265520. Those are the stock tyres, same nominal width, kind of, um, and same diameter. Now, the interesting thing about tyre width, first of all, is that it refers to the section width of the tyre here. It doesn't refer to the actual tread width and there can be quite a difference in tread width between tyres which have the same number, let's say 265 for section width. So here's the 17 inch, that's about 210. The 20 inch is about 230 and about 220 for the Wrangler. So you see there that the 265-65-17 had a tread width of 210 millimetres, whereas the uh, lower profile 265-50 had a tread width of 230 millimetres, 10% difference. Now what does that look like for contact patch length? Well, in order to measure the contact patches, what I did was uh, basically set the tyre up at different pressures, lower it down and then measure the length of the contact patch um, and then because I knew the width already that would then give me the overall contact patch area. I also painted the underside of a tyre and then lowered it down on to um, paper and measured it that way as a double check. So I'm pretty confident these results are correct but if there is any error it will be the same consistent error across all measurements. All right, so here's what I found with the two contact patch lengths. So you can see here that the blue line representing the lower profile tyre actually is um, greater. So that shows a greater contact patch length with the narrower tyre than with the wider tyre. So that's interesting. And then if we go to the contact patch size, you can see that it's actually very close. So what that's telling us is that the contact patch size is about the same but the shape is different. Now the average between those two is 3% and that's um, probably about 1% PSI um, in contact patch area. So for example if you're at 20 PSI in one tyre um, to get the same contact patch in another area you'd only need to change the pressure by 1 PSI or thereabouts. So that's probably within error of margin. Now what does that look like? So here's the, a scale diagram of the 265-65-17 which is 210 millimetres wide, 278 millimetres long um, and then overlaid on top is the low profile which is 265-55-20, a little bit wider and not as long. So that shows that the contact patch with a wide tyre is in fact shorter but it's a little, but it's also wider, and the area might be ever so slightly greater. That's a 1.6% area difference, but the width is actually 10% um, greater, so it's, it's by no means linear. 
All right, then we move over to Discovery 5, and I want to say thank you to uh, Land Rover, uh, Rita Land Rover here, who uh, gave me use of their Discovery 5 so I could do this. They haven't sponsored this in any way, in any way, shape, or form. I just want to thank them for, their, for the use of the vehicle. And three tyres here. A, this is a good one, a 275 40 22. That's a really low profile tyre, all the way up to a 265 65 18 in passion, passenger construction, all terrain, and passenger road, and that's also a passenger road. So, what did we find here? Well, Oh, one other thing I should point out, these, gra these are never exactly straight. You can see that it sort of goes more or less linear, then it jumps up a bit, then there's a bit of a curve. Every single time I've measured these tyres, and I've measured a lot of tyres, I've never found it to be consistent. There's always these sort of inconsistent jumps between different pressure, and I think that's due to the um, carcass design. And that's one reason why tyres don't behave exactly as um, an inflatable balloon. All right, so that's one. Then we um, put the 18 up, and then finally there's the 20. You can see that it's all very, very close, and that's actually something quite interesting we'll get to as well. Um, relatively high profile here, low profile there, same sort of contact patch length. Um, and the contact patch size, again, pretty close as well. And you can see that that's only a 2% difference between the greatest and the least. And again, that's around about 1% um, PSI below about 25. But there is um, a bit of a pattern starting to form here. Now, if we look at the scale diagram on this again, that's the 2555520. And then the 2656518 was a little bit longer, um, which was probably unexpected because it's a bit um, narrow, um, but it's also got a wider um, patch as well, which we do expect because it is five millimeters uh, wider, but I didn't expect it to be longer. Now the um, 275-40-22, that's definitely a lot wider, and you can see here that it has a shorter contact patch, but a wider contact patch. So again, that's starting to bear out what we found with the uh, Ranger set of tires as well. So here's, and here's the first point I wanna make. Um, a low profile tire, has the same pressure to contact patch ratio as a high profile. What I mean by that is if you drop your low profile down to 20 PSI, you're gonna get the same um, contact patch area as if you dropped a relatively high profile um, tire down. Now that won't necessarily be to the exact, you know, 1% or something like that because there are differences in constructions and measuring contact patches um, isn't the most exact thing in the world, but it actually makes very, very little difference to profile of a tire as you air it down to the, to the contact patch. That's not to say that you should be using low profile tires off road, definitely not. So this is why I don't use low profile tires off road. Um, you can see here that this has been aired down. There's a lot of weight on this um, tire because that's pretty much where all of the car's weight is. It's coming down a hill and you can see just how close that rim is to the tire there and then that's not any good for the tire it also means that the um, rim is actually open to damage as well so you want to go as high profile as you can for off-road for that reason and also the fact that the more low profile a tire uh, or tire wheel combination the heavier it is all right, so onto the Discovery Ford, and this is where we had a big difference between a 245 and a 275 in, in width. And the contact patch length is quite significant there, as you can see. The uh, 245 7017 had a significantly longer contact patch than the much wider 275 4022. And the contact patch size was also more significant in this case. So it was actually um, the 275 is 12% wider than the 245, um, but there's a 4% difference in contact patch there. Now, here's the 245, that's a scale diagram of it at 20 PSI. And if we overlay the 275 over the top, you can see it is a fair bit shorter and it's a fair bit wider. And at um, 20, and there's 7% difference at 20 PSI. Now that is starting to get into the significant areas. So what that means is that the 245 um, has a given contact patch, let's say at 17 PSI, but the 275 could achieve that contact patch at 20 PSI. So now that, that's a three PSI difference that is starting to get significant. So what these measurements are saying is that narrow tires have a long and narrow contact patch and wider tires have a wide and short contact patch of pretty much the same size, just a fraction greater for the wide ones. So I've represented that diagrammatically down the bottom here, exaggerated a bit, but the point being, if you buy 
buy a wider tire thinking that you're going to get a massively increased contact patch, you're not. There is a way to get a greater contact patch and we'll come on to that later. All right, now here's another myth. Narrow tires do not cut through mud. And that is something you often hear repeated that it will somehow sink down to get into the firm stuff. Well, that can't happen because the contact patch is virtually the same size. What does happen is this, when you're in snow and sand and potentially mud, you've got less frontal area on the tire and therefore you've got less riding resistance. So that's an advantage of narrow tires. Now another advantage of narrow tyres is let's say that if you've got a vehicle on a rock like that um, and here it is in diagrammatical form then if we look at the contact patch here I would rather have a contact patch which is long and it doesn't really matter how wide it is because I feel that would give me greater grip against the rock in a situation like this than a one which is relatively short so that's another win for narrow tyres. I also feel that with narrow tyres because the contact patch is relatively long and again we're not talking massive differences here you know 10 20 mil um, if that for the same diameter tire then the tire can better sort of mold around things um, rocks and pebbles like this and I feel that's an advantage as opposed to um, just sort of being very short and not having the length to sort of caterpillar track over the top of that all right now here's the question does contact patch um, size affect grip? Well, we need to um, first of all look at rolling resistance. Now rolling resistance, we all know that if you've got a tyre on a soft surface and then um, you decrease the air pressure, then it will float over the top. It won't sink in as much. Now that's not actually really increasing grip so much. It does a bit, but the main advantage there is you're actually reducing rolling resistance. I want to get that out of the way first. Okay, now we're going to talk about does the contact patch size actually affect grip? Well, there's two types of grip from a tyre. One is adhesion, which is the stickiness of the tyre against the surface. And the second thing is indentation or keying, or sometimes known as mechanical grip, which is how the tyre actually bonds into the surface itself. An extreme example of that is a uh, cog, for example, this one going up this uh, rail here. And that's uh, so grippy that you could actually put oil on that and it would still grip and of course that's how cogs work so those are your two types of grip now for adhesive grip the formula we're looking at there is the grip equals force over the normal force we can rewrite that and we can rewrite that again into english to say that the adhesion of a tire is dependent on the surface adhesion which is how grippy the tire is relative to the surface multiplied by the weight on the tire and that means that a small contact patch with a high um, pressure on it per area is the same as a large contact pack which is a low um, force over a larger area. So in theory, contact patch size doesn't matter when we're talking about adhesion, but in practice, I kind of think it does. And that comes back to the sort of tires not really being massively well understood even by the, the top level people there. So I think it's, it's as important, it's important for adhesion, but not as important for keying. Now, here's an expanded view of a tire. Um, the tire will, will sort of lock into the undulations, and this could be on a four-wheel drive track, it could be on a race track, nothing's perfectly smooth. If you go out to your bitumen road outside your house, you'll find that it's still not perfectly smooth. Now, the greater the contact patch there, the more the tire has got to lock into those tiny little undulations on the surface. So overall, for keying, certainly a greater contact patch is more grip. And if we go back to the Mercedes Formula One team, here they've got a tire at um, uh, 25 psi and 16 psi, you can see that the counter patch has expanded. It's got a little bit wider, which typically doesn't happen with road car tires. But the important point is the grip has gone from there to there. So by lowering the pressure, they've actually increased their grip. Now there's a bunch of reasons why you wouldn't want to go too low a tire pressure on a racing car, but you do have more grip because of the greater contact patch area. Okay, so that's the summary. The larger contact patch area equals more grip. And there's other reasons to air down other than increasing your contact patch area. I'll probably go through those in another video, but there are things like less bouncing around of the tire, which means that there's less bouncing equals more grip as well. So weights and tire width. If we take a tire of overall 31.6 inch diameter on a 235-85-16 that will come to a total of 36 kilograms per wheel total of 180.45 if we go for a 275-65-18 wider then the tyre weighs more the wheel weighs more and multiplied by five that comes out to more as well so we're adding a total of 15 kilograms to the vehicle's weight and therefore reducing its payload by the same amount but it's actually worse than that because that weight on the wheel is 
rotating mass as opposed to non-rotating mass. Now if you consider one kilogram here and one kilogram on the outside of the wheels, both those kilograms need to drive 100 meters down the road, but this one just needs to move from here to there. This one also needs to move here 100 meters down the road, but it also needs to rotate. So in terms of performance, you can consider every kilogram um, on, on here is about equivalent to 1.6 kilograms on the wheel. You really want to get your rotating mass down and also mass on the wheels is what we term unsprung mass, which is mass which is not controlled by the suspension and you want to minimize that as much as you can as well. So wider tires and wheels weigh more than narrow tires and wheels and that mass is the worst type of mass you can add to a vehicle because it is both unsprung and rotating and that's why um, having taller heavier tires and wider tires has a dramatic effect on fuel consumption plus extra strain on your drive shaft for example CVs, control arms etc. Let's take a look at the effect of contact patch with tyre diameter or the height of the tyre. Got a 33.7 inch tyre here and a 31 and a 30. And if I plot all of the results, what we find is that the um, greatest contact patch is of course with the tallest diameter tyre. Now this shouldn't happen according to classical physics but that seems to be the case um, with other measurements that I've had. So there's our summary. Taller tyres have a greater contact patch for given pressure than shorter tyres um, and we can say that the contact patch is related to the height and width of the tyre but not the volume. And the reason I say not the volume is because when you've got a low profile tyre that's got less volume of air in it than a high profile tyre for the same height and width then the uh, ratio of contact patch to pressure is pretty much the same. All right, so assuming we've got the same diameter tyres, why would you go narrow versus wide? Well, with a narrow tyre, you've simply got less <coughs> unsprung and rotating mass, and that's definitely a good thing. It also means you've got less stress on the drivetrain, and it's physically easier to change wheels, and then you get more payload because the vehicle just weighs less. It's also more fuel efficient, again because of the weight, but also because the narrow tyre has less aerodynamic drag. Your steering is less affected, it's cheaper, and I think that a thin and long contact patch is better off-road than a wider one which is shorter. Now why wide? Well, you never say never in cars and particularly off-roading. Sometimes a wide tyre is going to uh, perform better than a narrow one. For example, it gives you perhaps better grip in, in ruts. Um, you do get a little bit more contact patch for a given tyre pressure, but not really a huge amount. And it's better for high performance um, bitumen work. And of course, I guess it looks better on your Instagram. So let's take a quick look at what the Dakar racers do. The four wheel drives run only a 245 tyre, which is relatively narrow, considering we normally run 265s and, and beyond, yet they seem to do okay off-road and high speed and the trucks here they weigh 10 tons they run tires which are 350 millimeters wide and they do okay so if they can do with a tire of 350 mil wide why do you need a tire wider than that for your 79 series all right so let's finish up with a recommendation Everything that I've done personally and the research I've done and talking to engineers indicates that the best tyre for off-roading is actually narrow and tall. And if you want to go wide, you can do, but do consider the disadvantages, particularly around weight and the effect on your vehicle. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments.